So, a few weeks ago, I went online to play Red Dead Redemption, like I do every morning to get my share of Wild West action. I noticed this guy running in a straight line to Chuparosa, which is kind of like a ghost town. And you know, he was a newbie. Everyone knows you don't run in a straight line in an open field because you're gonna get shot in video games or in real life. And he did. I took my gun and BAM! Shot him. He never knew what hit him. Ten seconds later, he or she respawned like 50 meters away and I started to run again in a straight line to Chuparosa. I take my shotgun this time to have more fun and BAM! Shoot him again and again and again until I became most wanted player. There's a bounty on your head. And then all the other players ganked up on me and they came for the bounty and killed me. I respawn, and then I look around for Latin Lupe 752 that was his or her name, I don't know. And I find that he or she is running away from the town, trying to, I guess, she just wanted to play in peace. I hop to my horse, climb up on a hill, take out my Carcano rifle, and BAM! Shoot him in the head. He or she responds again, gets on the horse, tries to ride away, I shoot the horse, then I shoot him or her, and they never come back. Now the question is, why, what would turn an active member of a Stanford University Peace Innovation Lab like myself into a vicious killer and a bully like I did that morning? The answer is very simple. There was a reward for me being a bully. Every time I shot Latin Lupe 752, I, would, I was getting experience points. A clean shot in the head would give me even more experience points. So first, there was a reward for me being a bully. Then second, the penalties implemented in the system for me being a bully were not enough to deter me from doing it. I was killed twice by the other members of the game, but that didn't take away my, my points, that didn't affect my reputation, so I didn't mind. I kept on killing Latin Lupe 752. Finally, it was not about Latin Lupe 752. I didn't care if she was a girl or a boy, if she was weak. I didn't know who he or she was. I didn't think he or she was weird or different. I killed her and I kept on killing her or him because I could, because there was a reward for me in doing it, and because the system had not enough penalties to deter me from doing it. I think that's a problem we have today with bullying in the schools. So I guess by now you know I play a lot of video games. Now I do that because not just to have fun, but to learn from them. So I have a, a question for you. I know it's a trick question. You know, where does learning take place? In the classroom, out there in the field undertaking actions, or in your brain? Now for me, actually learning, any enjoyable experience takes place in your mind. The trick to get engagement in education, or in video games, or in any other kind of activity, is to provide an incomplete experience that the user completes within their minds. So let me, let, me t let, me, let me tell you, when we play Nintendo Wii Sports, we go like this, you know, we, we play tennis, we go like this. We play bowling like this, you know, the full swing. We play golf like this. If you watch my five-year-old nephew, he plays like this. He's never played bowling, he's never played tennis, he's never played golf. So he learned how to trick the system, for, for him, there's no joy in playing the game. For me and for all of us, it's, we think we're playing tennis and we're going through all the motions. The system doesn't require it, but we are completing the experience in our minds. The same thing happens with teachers who, go, who don't have access to new media. They have to tell you the story of the Battle of Gettysburg and then they tell you about the morning mist, they tell you about the, the smell of horses, they tell you about the smell of powder. And you know, the kids, they complete the experience within their minds. They imagine the rest. Now we have new media, we present a video. If there's no blood in the video, the kids don't like it. But then there's, there's no, nothing of interest because we're providing an incomplete experience. So what I learned from video games is if you want to provide engagement in education, provide an incomplete experience that the students can complete within themselves. So finally, do you think video games are fun? Really? Have you ever watched your kid play video games? There's not much laughter involved. There's a lot of cursing, there's a lot of frowning, there's a lot of anger. You know why? And I think that's the important thing. We've been trying to get the fun part of video games into education, trying to make education fun. I don't care for that. I want to make education addictive. I want kids to run home to do their homework. I want kids to run to the school to learn, just like they do run home to not do their homework, but play video games. And the, the reason why 
game, video games, the ones that are good are addictive, it's because they're increasingly challenging. They have a progressive challenge that you get to solve in different ways. There's a progressive development. What you do matters. Immediate, you get immediate response for your action, but also progressive response. There's, um, there's an unlocking of strengths. The more you play, the better you get, but not only physical, but your character in the game, the game gets to unlock uh, skills and powers. There's a strict fairness in the game. There's no student favorite of the teacher, sorry. There's no favorite player for the game. The game is fair for everyone. If you play right, if you play more, if you play good, you get better scores, you get better at the game, and you get to beat the system. Not like in the school. There's also a lot of uncertainty. You get to recover from your losses. You never fail a test and that's it. You get to try again and again until you succeed. And then you're evaluated upon multiple aspects. You're evaluated in how fast you do it, how, more, how much money you collect, how, much, how many coins you, you collect. So I guess that what I'm saying is I'm all for addictive education. So if you like to turn education into an addictive system, come talk to me and let's do it. Thank you.